Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. Been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals. I go out and I go get it. How to code, that's all I know. I don't succeed, then I don't breathe. Success, what does it mean? If I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream. Dig deep, go out and get it. Success Chronicles, compete until it's finished. Success Chronicles, go take care of your business. Success Chronicles, it's deeper than just winning. Success Chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. Today, excited about this episode, we have Miss Annie Koshi with us, a great lady doing some great things. Uh, it's going to be a, a great episode, so get ready. But first, thanks so much for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. Chip, it's an absolute honor to be here. I'm thrilled to have this time to be able to talk to you, to talk to your audience. And yeah, thank you so much for having and hosting me on the show. Awesome. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, uh, kind of track your journey. Let the people know who you are and what it is you do. Wow. Where do I start? Well, I'm of East Indian origin. I uh, was born in India and was raised. Initially, we were in the U.S. and then we migrated from the U.S. to Canada when I was a little girl. Um, typical sort of upbringing uh, for an East Indian family, I would say. I was raised by my grandparents for the first several years of my life till I was about four and a half, five years old. And then um, I was brought over to the States. That's where I really met my parents, I could say. Mm -hmm. And we migrated here uh, to Canada. Um, grew up in a in a in a typical um, middle upper class sort of uh, family. Um, parents, you know, had the immigrant story where they came in over with really nothing and struggled and studied and and made um, ends meet and and really worked hard to give my brother and myself a really really stable um, upbringing. And so. That, uh, you know, led, I became a teacher. Um, I, I decided to follow the path that my father had taken. And, you know, growing up, we weren't really given very much option in terms of what, what it is that we want to do or mm -hmm. what choices there were. There were five or six professions that were sort of seen as being uh, reputable or um, good enough for us to do. You know, one being doctor, engineer, computers, right. teaching, yeah. you know, the typical sort of thing. But mm -hmm. to branch out, to do something in the artistic realm, to do something in media that wasn't something that was really an option at that point and if you look back at the time that I was and this is several several decades ago and I'm not going to scare your listeners and viewers into telling them exactly how many decades ago but let's just say several decades ago um, the option for a colored woman to go into media or for, an, uh, for a colored woman to actually make a success of themselves in the live stage platform was yeah. very minimal. It was, there weren't that many mentors that I could look up to to say that I wanted to follow their footsteps. There are today. However, at that time, that wasn't an option. And I didn't know anyone who um, uh, that I, I could sort of imitate. And the second thing is, wow, it takes years and years of, living to really come to the point where you realize what you want to do in life. It took me four and a half decades before life slapped me on the head and said, you know what, you have less life left to live than you've got living. And so that's when it really was a point in my life that I said, wow, I cannot continue this trajectory I was on. And I revamped my entire life. I am who I am today because of that courage to do that. I think that at some point we need to step out of our comfort zone and become uncomfortable to become comfortable again. We tend to stay in that zone of comfort only because it is hard to change. It is hard to make change. It is hard to think about change. But forget that. It's hard to actually do an action to make that change happen. And so... Uh, it's when you get to the point where there is no more down, there is no more rock bottom to hit. When you hit that rock bottom, all you can do is climb out from that rock bottom. And so that's basically where I found myself at one point in my life where I had said, is this all that life has to offer? Is this what I'm meant to do? Is this where I'm supposed to be? Is this how my life's going to be for the next 20 years, 30 years? Um, and uh, that's when I made a change. 
That's all. That was a long answer for a question. <laughs> no, no, hey, no, that, that was good stuff. I, I got like about half a page of notes from that little, <laughs> that little intro right there. Okay, hey. so that was perfect. Well, uh, what are three things you've accomplished in your life that you're proud of? Oh my gosh. Every day is an accomplishment. I really yeah. feel that there is so much that we do in uh, our daily sort of living that I feel every day is an accomplishment. However, I have to say that um, first and foremost, the fact that I gave birth and raised two kids, two incredible human beings, that um, that has been a, a huge number one accomplishment. Being a mom has shaped who I am as a person today, and that's been number one. The second most impactful accomplishment, I would say, is having um, written a book. I never imagined in my life that I would actually bring to life um, a book and that's something that I had always dreamed about. My grandfather was an author and he had an entrepreneurial spirit. He, I think, is the um, hero, the mentor, the guide in my life that I didn't realize at that time was going to be who I imitated so much more today. Everyone sort of sees my grandfather in me today. Um, and that's because at the time, he was someone that was not doing the typical thing. He was an entrepreneur in a time when entrepreneur was not even a word that was coined. Yes. You yes. know, this was a man who had um, very minimal education. In fact, at the time, he had the highest level of education that was possible for someone, um, you know, in, in the era, era that he grew up. Uh, but he had street smarts, and he had vision, and he had perseverance, and he had dedication, and all of those components are the ingredients to become very successful as an entrepreneur. And in an entrepreneur, if you look at the term, it is to do something that has not been done before. It is not when you open up your own business. That's a small business owner. When you're an entrepreneur, you're stepping out of comfort, and you're stepping into the zone of let's invent something that's not there. Let's create something that's new. And so um, my grandfather actually was uh, very instrumental. He wrote one of the first travel guides that was uh, written in India, and he presented it to Indira Gandhi. This was something that was done in, an, in a time that was very unusual. Fast forward, and I find myself today being an author. And... I never expected it. I, first off, I you know when you take all of the mess that's in your head, the things that we say to ourselves, all the words and the things and experiences, where do you start? How do you pen it down? And what's your niche? What are you going to focus on? And that was hard. Having worn so many hats in my life, I didn't know what was my focus. I could talk on any subject, really. And I was good at multiple things. And so to determine what was the focus of my book, uh, that was a huge step towards accomplishing that goal of writing a book. And so How to Be Your Badass Self, Using Your Inner Energy for Brand Success is the book that I wrote that I would say um, it, it was like my third baby. I gave birth, I would say, to a book baby. It took two years. It's almost like giving birth to a giraffe, but it was a book. And, um, <laughs> and so, yes, humor is a very important foundation rock in my life. And so um, the book baby led to two other uh, things. And that was my third major accomplishment. And that was to see myself uh, on the big screen. Mm. Becoming a model and an actress in midlife is something that most women, most people don't even think about. Uh, and I never imagined that I would have the opportunities that I have today at that time, because you're always told, oh, it's, you know, you're, you're too old, you're too short, you're too this, you're too that. And we live according to what everyone else says we are. But when you see yourself, if you look at yourself and say, you can, well, I am that little machine of I can. And so to have two award-winning films out there, one in which I acted and is only an 11 and a half minute short, but it has an impactful uh, sort of message. The fact that we still find it difficult to talk about periods and menstruation and the film is called A Bloody Mess and it talks about the stigma or it begins a dialogue about the stigmas about menstruation. That film has won several awards and um, and uh, there have been a, there's been a lot of talk associated with that but bigger than that was my feature length documentary biopic on my life called fear face everything and rise now fear face everything and rise was huge because 
it came after I actually um, decided to walk away from a long-term relationship. And it was after 26 years that I decided to leave that relationship. Now, professionally, it's great. Um, both the first, both the second and the third accomplishments, becoming an author and then becoming an actress um, were dreams that I had in my head. But to see them actually become a reality, mm-hmm. that's sweet success. And, and so when you look at it, what are the things that you say to yourself? What are the, what are the things that um, you have in your head uh, that you think about that perhaps are pipe dreams, but how do you determine to take those pipe dreams, um, even start to think about the actionable steps in your head, but then to put the actual action together and the disappointments that come with that success as well. And I know you're going to discuss success, but those are the three major things in my life that I would say are the accomplishments. That's awesome. So good. So (laughs) such a neat journey. Uh, Definitely three great things to be proud of. Um, And I will consider that to be hugely successful. So let's hit on success. What is your definition of success? Well, you know, I have to say that today my definition of success is very different than what I thought was a definition of success. What do we look at success? We look at someone who's successful as, is it the money that they have? Is it the car? Is it the house? Is it the lifestyle that they live? Is it all of that? And, you know, you still look at those individuals who have all of those things and they still seem unhappy. And so what is it that defines success? And you have to really break down what society determines as being success and being successful and think about what makes you happy. If you wake up happy every day, you can say that you have a measure of success, right? If you are confident confident about your ability, confident about who you are as a person, confident about how you interact, confident about your business, then you can say you have a measure of success. Are you confident about your well-being? Are you healthy? Do you have a sense of well-being? Are you able to live the type of life that you want? And not in terms of um, money or in terms of material goods, but are you able to have the quality of life that you want? Are you able to have that well-being of feeling balanced and 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 on an even sort of footing every day that you wake up? Then you can say that you have a measure of success. And so success over time for me has really been um, a journey of understanding who I am as a person, what do I want in my life, and how do I need to, and what do I need to do in order to accomplish that. So it's a combination of the personal, the professional, as well as my life goals. You know, it's done through so many different aspects. It's about, you know, taking that time and adjusting the mindset to being able to really listen to that inner voice. We often don't listen to that inner voice. We put aside that inner voice because that the clamor and the chaos of what goes on around us suppresses that inner voice. But in those moments of quiet, when you sit back and you really reflect and you listen to that voice, that voice, that intuition, that sound, that soul within you is going to tell you which way you need to go. Now, it's up to you to determine whether you're going to follow that voice or you're going to continue to listen to all the clamoring and the chaos of what's going on in the outside world. And when I took that moment to really listen to that inner voice, that's when I started to find myself successful. So measuring that success, it's really being able to make those bold decisions to reach those goals that you truly wanted to reach. Well, you know, I really just have one word uh, in response to that, uh, Annie coaching. And that word is boom. <laughs> hey, <My job. laughs> hey, let's go. <laughs> Man, that's some good stuff right there. Personal, professional, life goals. Uh, you know, you hit on those questions that you have to ask yourself. I think, you know, the best relationship that you need to have is with yourself. Right? Absolutely. You need to have that, that, that great self-talk. You need to have reflective moments where you can, you know, reflect on okay, my journey, my, my track, you know, what am I doing? My actions. You talked about the actions. And I think that when we can do those things and then course correct, if we need to, 
you know, I think it's within that lies that happiness that you talked about. Yeah, and I think there it takes a long time. Initially, when you're in your 20s, your early adulthood, you think yeah. that success is monetary. Mm -hmm. And as you work through it, of course, there is definitely, uh, I'm not going to argue with anyone, you do need to have the money, you do need to have that lifestyle, um, you need to have something that brings you uh, a, a sort of a reward, a comfort level. Um, and, and that's definitely there. But if you if that is your measure of success, then you've um, missed out on a lot of other things. The success that I'm talking about that I really seek and, and look for now is the intrinsic, the emotional success, the, the balance, the, the desire to be able to shape my day the way I wish to shape it. Okay. And, you know, I am so thrilled to be able to plork through my life. And, and people say, what's that? Well, it's an urban term of being able to play and work at the same time, you know. And so I, uh, I, I love doing that and just sort of write notes down. <laughs> I see you scrolling away there and um, you know when when you're able to uh, like I work long hours you cannot be an entrepreneur you cannot be successful um, and and think that someone else is going to do it I I'm a solopreneur and I I truly enjoy it but I enjoy it because it's not work for me it's actually um, playing at my hobby. So I get up every day and I play, you know, I play at different things. I play in, in my acting. I do my voiceovers. I do my radio show. I do my um, graphics. I, yeah. I talk to people. I, you know, and none of that is boring. But if, if I look back on, there are several times I heard people say this on Saturday night, they're like, uh, what's wrong? Well, I've got work on Monday true but today saturday yeah but i got tomorrow and i've got to get this done and that done they've not even experienced sunday yeah. they have fast forward to monday morning 6 a.m where they have to get out of bed and they're groaning on saturday night right and so friday nights when they go crazy what's happening tonight oh well it's friday night it's the weekend right and that mentality i don't know when i thought about it being a friday night i have seven days of work you know, and I choose which day I want to have off. I choose what times in which day I want to have off because I decide if I need to do something on a certain day, that's when I do it. I find that my life is so busy now and the more busy that I am, the more accomplished I get because I find I utilize the time in a much more practical way. Think about the days that you have off and you get up in the morning thinking that you're, first off, those days that you have off and you get up late in the morning, it's probably around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, maybe you roll around around 12 o'clock, half the morning's done, right? And then you get up and you do what? You sit on that sofa and you sit, oh, you start with one show. Oh, but then there's another part of that show. So let's sit down. Five hours later, you're still binge watching that show because you have a day off. And before you realize your day off is a zero day accomplishment, right? You've not done a thing. It's nice to have those days. But if that's the message that you're giving to yourself, even on your days off, you're really not really accomplishing very much in life. So even on the days off is to have those plans, to have and schedule the time that you're going to do something or to think about it. Even if you don't write it down into your calendar, you think about it. What are you going to do with your day? What are you going? What is your purpose? What is your why? What is the why of your every day? That is very, very important. Love it, love it, love it. Well, before we get off, if you don't mind sharing with the audience where they can go follow you and check you out and show you some love. Absolutely. There are a number of areas that you can find me um, on Facebook. You can find me under uh, my name, Annie J. Koshi. Um, I also have my company brand on Facebook, GTA South Asia Media Network. That's GTA, S-O-U-T-H, A-S-I-A-N, Media, M-E-D-I-A, Network, N-E-T-W-O-R-K. On Instagram, under Annie J. Koshi, as well as uh, GTA South Asia Media Network. I'm on LinkedIn under any uh, Koshi again. I'm on Twitter. Um, my websites are available. Just reach out. Instagram, DM me or find me. I'm on Clubhouse as well um, under Branding Ninja. And uh, yeah, um, just put my name into Google. There will be plenty of me on there. <laughs> so. Well, there it is. Again, I just want to say thanks uh, so much for taking the time uh, and dropping so much heat. <laughs> uh, on the success chronicles truly appreciate it and i wish you continued success 
Thank you so much, Chip. It's so yeah. important. I think that the platform that you have here right now, Chip, is so important because often, as I mentioned to you before, we walk by people and we say, hi, how are you? And we don't stop to really listen to their response. You know, If you take that moment to see who's in your life, who's around you, who can you elevate in that process, who, how can they elevate you, you're all going to become successful. And so we look at that stage not being a, a mountain in which someone is at the pinnacle of success, but rather a platform in which we all have space to stand as successful people, then we've made some great leaders in our life. Love it. Love it. Well, again, I wish you continued success. Uh, and thank you guys for checking out this episode. We'll see you next time. God bless. Thank you.